Hey everyone, this is Dan, and today we're going to talk about Particles GPU Ultimate, which is a Patreon exclusive component of mine based on my previous tutorial about Particles GPU effectors. And this component is built on top of that tutorial. It's it's a little bit more in depth and much more uh, features than I could include in a full tutorial. So this video is going to be a breakdown of this tool that you will find on my Patreon. So what this component is really great for is dealing with um, 2D inputs and making very nice particle looks from them. Uh, as you can see, I just changed to a painting of money and I didn't change anything from the previous settings, but you know, as I start tweaking it, you can kind of see how it comes alive um, through these settings that we can all play with. Um, and I'm going to break down everything about about this tool and how to operate it. First, we're gonna talk about what we're all here for and it's the effectors. So we have three effector pages here for live, turbulence and wind. And there's also other effectors kind of built into um, the GLSL part of it. So I didn't use effectors for that, but this can be thought of as effectors. I will talk about them also when it comes to color and size and alpha. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about first the turbulence. I'm going to turn off the wind and the turbulence as well. So this is kind of our basic without any forces. And each of these effectors will have a dark side and a bright side. And by dark side, what I mean is based on the RGB lookup. So based on which channel uh, we base our effector on. So in this case, this is based on the luminance value of each pixel. And to easier talk about this, I just changed to a ramp input. So for the dark side, I want no turbulence, for example. Um, and for the bright side, I want a certain type of turbulence. Here I can define that. Um, there's, an, there's a general gain to, to everything and there's an exponent. So I can change the distribution of the dark and the bright side. So I could also have a little bit of turbulence on the dark side, but maybe only on the y-axis. So let's put some value there. Now we can see that happening. I can have a different uh, turbulence period also, depending on which side we're on. So let's put very low turbulence on the dark side. And again, I can change the distribution of these two. The translation is common between the dark and the bright side. And that's because otherwise it would get a little bit noisy. So it's just better to have, um, as I found, um, the same translation for both sides. Okay, let's switch back to our eye. And then here I'm going to talk about this last switch here, which is init position slash current position. So I changed some settings, but kept the current position on. And it means that each particle at each frame will have a new effector value based on their current position. So if a pixel that used to be on the bright side ventures into the dark side, um, it gets the dark side lookup values. And that may be nice. That is actually nice. But sometimes you might want um, that the effector stays constant throughout the particle's life cycle. So we can base the effector value only based on their initial position. So if I turn this on, we have a totally different look and we have different behavior of the particle system. And it's all super nice. Now we're entering into the wind lookup. Um, we can also see that effect here. So I turn on the wind gain. On the dark side, we have no wind. And on the bright side, we have uh, wind that's, that's pushing the particles down. And of course, I can also change the distribution here as well. Um, but as you can see, we don't see much of the effect happening because, for example, as particles enter into the middle section, which is called, I guess, the pupil. Yeah, exactly. Um, they they kind of lose their, their wind um, value. So if we turn this to init position, then we see that those particles that started with a bright uh, lookup side, they stay on that side until they die. 
And if I change the life of the particles uh, on the life tab, so this is now a constant life with some variance, um, we can see this effect even more. So let's switch back to current position and we lose most of the wind. We can also combine, so the wind can have the init position uh, effectors and for example the, uh, the turbulence can have either also the init position like this or they can have the current position turbulence. So this is a super nice combination and making it a little bit more interesting. Next up we can also have an effector on the life of the particles. If we change the life to effector mode, then the life will be the dark side and the life maximum will be the bright side of the particles. Let's also have some variance to that. Um, and we can also change the distribution here as before, as well as sort of arranging the dark and the bright values on dark side. And this only really works with uh, the init position. There's a little bit of a bug I found when I turn this to current position. Um, particles just kind of tend to, yeah, die. To be totally frank, I think this is a little bit buggy. I think there's like a cook dependency loop kind of somewhere in there. So that's why we are also seeing this kind of pulsating effect sometimes, even though we have live variance. So I mostly use this as constant. Out of curiosity, we can check what happens if we input our Monet painting now. And to not much surprise, this looks amazing. Nice. Also switching between the two has a very nice effect. So yeah, this component works great with like little slideshowy um, visuals, let's say. Also, I guess it's needless to say that I've had um, feedback on the whole time. So there's a post effects tab here uh, with a simple feedback network. Without the feedback, it would look like this. Then we have the extra forces tab, which uh, can be any number of extra forces. Here we are having a radial force pushing or pulling. We can change the position of this obviously also. We can change the force type or just add the new one. So we have a vortex here, which will create rotational force. And we can also add more forces to, to this. We can add the spiral and change the direction of it also. So we can play around a lot with these extra forces. So these are all the different effectors we can play with or different forces we can play with using effectors and extra forces. I really want to talk about the fade settings next, which are under the look page. Um, here I've changed the material to a constant, changed the sop to a box as opposed to a point that we've had before, and increased the particle size so we can see more. Um, there's other material options and you can always customize the material, the currently active material by clicking on open mat. Um, and we have also a compositing option, but yeah, I want to talk about the fade options. So far we've had everything on one, uh, except for the color to size. Um, so I'm going to turn all these to what would be by default coming with particles GPU, and it would look something like this, which is obviously not super nice if we are working with BGOs and stuff. So, so what this component adds onto that is the ability to fade to an alpha. So the particles now fade out nicely. But what's even more, we can fade to a size of zero. So they grow into existence and shrink into death, to put it poetically. And we also have the option to map the color to the size. So darker particles will have a smaller size by default. If I turn off the fade to size, um, we can see that's still happening because we are fading to color. But if I'm not fading to color, we can kind of see the separation, especially if we uh, change the exponent. So darker particles are now definitely smaller. 
we can however also invert this so darker particles become bigger and i've just put in a normalized option also for the color to size obviously this is best used with still images with videos you might not get the best results and i find that these settings are very crucial to having a super nice and fluid particle look next up i want to talk about the kind of less interesting um, settings of this component we have a source control tab which lets us threshold the incoming image a bit more we also have some compositing options here uh, two composites basically one an under composite and one uh, any composite that you want to put here we can also comp in a background color if we want to and combine all these the next page is the basic particle gpu controls so our render resolution our create options particles per frame or total number of particles um, this we know i talked about the init position which in the case of using effectors i like to turn this off because it makes everything a little bit more controlled more predictable we have different uh, camera inputs and light inputs um, the default one has a projection blend also um, as an exposed parameter so this is uh, fully orthographic and this is a perspective then we have hit behavior options which i don't really ever use so i can turn this to bounce on contact which we don't see because the bounds are actually uh, only making sense when it's in orthographic mode but here we can see what's happening we can obviously change the speed as you would normally and the drag in the case of using an optical flow input which would be the third one um sorry the fourth one then we can change the magnitude of that and remap that we can suppose and reset as an optical flow input by the way i cannot recommend lake hackerman's fluid simulation enough and now that we know all that, we get to have our fun with this component. Here I put together this little demonstration of using a separate wind uh, and separate turbulence input source. So I have a little composition network here. The background of Monet's painting is gonna be the only source of wind. Um, otherwise, the source of the turbulence is only gonna be my face. Um, and we can see this nice effect pan out super nicely here so i hope you enjoyed the breakdown of this little particle gpu ultimate wrapper component as i said it's available on my patreon along with a lot of other goodies and i hope to see you there and thank you for your support